What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chad's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson. And today, I'm gonna show you how I made this beautiful, delicious, smoky, barky, foil boat brisket, rated by Jeremy Yoder. Coming up. If you're a fan of this channel, you are likely a barbecue nerd who spends their time going through the internet looking for food, porn, and barbecue tips and tricks. And if that's the case, you've likely come across Jeremy Yoder, the mad scientist barbecue himself. He's got a great YouTube channel where he explores a lot of things in the barbecue world, not just from a how-to perspective, but he focuses a lot on the why. And as his name suggests, he has a very scientific approach. And because barbecue tends to bring people together, I met Jeremy Yoder last summer at the Windy City Smokeout up in Chicago, and we cooked some amazing tomahawk steaks together. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely go check it out. But one thing I've never cooked for Jeremy is a brisket. And because he happens to be in town this weekend, today is the day where Jeremy Yoder is going to rate my brisket. That's right, folks. I'm going to make a classic foil boat chud style brisket, and we're going to see what Jeremy thinks. So that's what we're going to do today, and it is going to be delicious. This is a brisket. Yeah. Now I thought about getting a Wagyu brisket, you know, pulling out every trick in the book to try and wow him. But at the end of the day, I really wanted to just taste my go-to run-of-the-mill everyday brisket. Let the foil boat shine and also make something that's a little more obtainable for y'all at home. So we're going with a Costco Prime brisket. Here's about a 15, 16 pounder. And that's always step number one when trying to cook a great brisket is start with a great brisket. And prime beef is a great place to start. Tip number two, of course, is giving it a good trim. Really, we're just trying to maximize the amount of sliceable brisket we get at the end of the day that's got enough fat but not too much fat while giving it nice shape and making sure everything is nice and aerodynamic that way nothing burns up or gets too hard or crispy and that is looking pretty much perfect to me let's season it up for our rub today, we're going on with some good old fashioned SPG. This is my go-to rub as of late. It's mostly salt and pepper with a little bit of garlic for a little extra flavor. And if you wanna make this yourself, it is two parts 16 mesh black pepper, one part diamond crystal kosher salt, and one half part granulated garlic. And because it's so pepper heavy, we can go on pretty heavy without having to worry about over salting it. Tip number three for a great brisket. Don't forget the sides, folks. Come on, those are some of the best bites. Looking good to me. Let's fire up the pit. Maybe when Jeremy gets here, he can help me find that damn snake in my boot. Onto the pit she goes, fat side facing up, fatty end towards the fire. And we're gonna rock this pit around 250 degrees for the first hour or so, and then we'll check back in. Yeah. 10 hours later, let's see how this brisket is looking. Ooh, hoo, hoo, looking good. Got a beautiful bark on there. Ow, that is hot. Woo! But as you can see, we've got a lovely bark on there. Looking real nice, feeling nice and rendered. It's about 180 degrees internal, so it is time to wrap it up. And per usual, I had nothing going on during this cook. I was just maintaining temps around 275, upward to 300 degrees for this entire cook. No spritzes, no water pans, nothing fancy. Although I did chip a couple of pieces of beef fat onto the fire here and there, just for a little extra extra added flavor, but now we're gonna give this the old trusty foil boat. I don't think old Jeremy Yoder has ever done a foil boat open face like this. So it'll be interesting to see what he thinks of the crunchy bark. And again, the main point of the boat, if you're new here, is to leave the top fat cap exposed, which is gonna give us a really nice crunchy bark, make sure all this top fat renders down nicely, while the foil is gonna collect all the extra juices that come out and kind of comfy and tenderize the bottom, almost like a braise, and also protect the sides and edges, which is why I went a little heavier over this lean side from drying out too much. So back on the pit this goes for another hour or two just to continue cooking and it shouldn't be much longer because this foil is also going to conduct a lot more heat and help this cook really speed up. So back on the smoker it goes, same position and we will let this finish on. One other trick I really like when cooking briskets at this stage is to hit it with some Worcestershire sauce. Now that the bark is set, I'm gonna pop this into a spray bottle and give this a few shots just to finish off. It's gonna add some really nice tasting notes onto the bark, giving it a little bit of that je ne sais quoi, a little extra flavor. And also the darkness of it is really gonna help solidify that bark. Not to mention, we're going for a crispy bark here, but on the off chance that anything gets too crispy, this is the time to hit it with a little bit of spritz. So that's what we're gonna do for the next few hours, maybe every 20 minutes or so, we'll give it a light spritzing with some of this stuff. But because Worcestershire sauce and other hot sauces can really stain and clog up your bottles, I like to take a nice lazy approach and just go right on in. 
12 hours on the dot later, this brisket is coming off the pit. Feeling nice, smelling really delicious, nice and smoky. I've got it on a little wire rack in this pan, and I'm gonna pop it into my toaster oven to have a nice warm overnight rest. It's rocking right around 155 degrees right now, and it's gonna sit there until we're ready to slice in at some point tomorrow. 15 hours later, this is coming out of the oven. Looking nice and barky. Oops, nothing wrong with that. I think it's time to slice in. Ooh. Look at that bark. Are you ready to dive in? Dude, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jeremy Yoder from Mad Scientist Barbecue. If you haven't seen his channel, I definitely recommend checking it out. He does some crazy sh stuff. <laughs> Jeremy, welcome to Austin. Thank Hi. you for coming. Well, thank you. Thanks for letting me play around with your smokers, use your wood, eat your barbecue. This is awesome. So I have to tell you this. When people were describing the foil boat brisket, they, they said, well, you get the crusty bark or crispy bark maybe mm -hmm. is the word, crispy bark. In my experience, anytime a part of a brisket is crispy, it means I failed in some way. Right. This, where you have the fat crisped, that makes complete sense to me. Right. I didn't understand what people were saying. I thought that they were saying the meat, right. you know, this side is crispy. Usually that means uh, it's going to tear when I try to slice it. Right. Not really what you want. But this is beautiful. The the bark that you have on this is amazing. It's that meteorite type bark right. that everybody's really after. So this method makes total sense. It looks awesome. Smells really good. So do I get to do the honors of slicing off the parts that I want to try? Of course. I got to get one of these branded knives. There's no additional tallow added. The tallow is is just the tallow that got collected in the boat, as you saw me dumping on there. The hardest thing for me is to get honest feedback from somebody who actually knows. Right. So I want to give you honest feedback, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I don't imagine there's going to be much bad or ugly, but I'll tell you exactly what I think. So this is the cut that I would take to tell me, how did you do with smoke flavor and did you keep it moist? And that is still moist. This is the end. Of, uh, I'm not good at running your operation here. <laughs> Can you see? There's just tons of juice in the lean part of this brisket. Costco Prime, stuff I cook all the time. Yeah, this is great. I'm going to take a bite of this. So rule number one, guys, if you feed your wife, she'll put up with a lot of barbecue here you go <laughs> refusing to be on camera oh she, she did it she did it here we go it's really good there's a difference in texture that you get. Rather than the whole outside being soft, it's thinking about being crispy, but it's not burnt, it's not chewy. It's just, oh, there's some extra texture and then the soft meat inside and the bark is just packed with flavor. So very impressed by that. I didn't think I would like it this much. Now I get to see, that's pretty good, man. I'd eat it. All right, so that's like my favorite part of the brisket. That's my second favorite part. I see this beautifully rendered fat where it incorporates itself into the bark. Also, this is lots of juice, beautifully done, and I would expect nothing less from bread, but I'm gonna eat my favorite bite first. This right here. I'm just gonna tear this off. That's really freaking good, man. Really good. The pepper, the smoke, the rendered fat, the difference in texture, the, the biggest difference for me. I don't know that I'd want to do it always like this, but I can appreciate it. It's different, but done expertly. I just want to eat more. This is good. If you guys have ever had doubts, have no more doubts. <laughs> This is on par with any of the places you'll find in Austin. Man. Well, it's like you said too, it's just something different. It's very robust because of all that extra smoke and that super crunchy bark on there. Yeah. That rendered fat you get on the outside is unreal, man. I always try to render the fat on, on briskets before I wrap them, mm -hmm. but this achieves a new level. When you have crispy bacon, there's something about it you could just can't replace. And look at this. No, no, look at that. Look at it. Beautiful. Full of juice. Perfect bark. It's really good. So sometimes if people wrap too early, it can kind of get liquidy in the bottom mm -hmm. and then like the, the bark kind of wipes away. This is a little soft, but it doesn't wipe away. The bark is still there. If you wrap it too soon, like at the beginning of the stall, all that moisture that it's pushing out, is just gonna be collected in there. You're gonna end up braising it a little bit. You know what I mean? Look at that. So beautiful. I'm gonna eat at a bunch of the barbecue places around town, but I'm not sure I'm gonna have a better brisket. But here's the thing, the meat underneath is perfectly tender, but it's not shredding. Everything's been kind of integrated into that bark on top. And so you have texture, you have smoke, you have salt, pepper, and that rendered fat. Man, this is the power of rendered fat. Unbelievable. All right, here we go. Mm, wow. As my pappy used to say, you can't beat that with a stick. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Hard to beat that bark though, you know? And also, we've got, we got to have the slap. 
Dunk. <laughs> I think that maybe when you kind of dry out all of this, maybe some of the smoke flavor that was volatile from the fire going into the cook chamber, maybe it goes away a little bit. Mm -hmm. Maybe it diminishes some because I get a stronger smoke flavor on the bottom side hmm. than on the top side. It just comes down to preference. If you like that change in texture, especially if you have difficulty rendering fat on your smoker, oh, yeah, perfect. this yeah. is the way. Yeah, that's when I did my pellet cooker brisket. <clears throat> I did the foil boat as well for that very yeah. reason. Like, if you're not getting enough smoke on your brisket, you know, mm -hmm. leaving it exposed the whole time is gonna give you an extra few hours of smoke. Yeah, exactly. It makes complete sense. Yeah, man, this is really, really good. Different than I expected, though. So I'm trying to think of some constructive criticism because that's what I'm always looking for. Right. Right? I think that for the method, you've executed it pretty much flawlessly. I mean, I totally now understand why people want to do it this way. It's simple, but good. This is brisket where you pay attention to the details, execute them all perfectly, and you get something simple, but great. Gosh, I gotta find something to say. Uh, I think maybe if you had greener wood, you might have like a richer smoke flavor. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll have to try it with uh, some mesquite one of these days. Yeah, we'll have to give that a shot, I and mean, they do that at Valentina's. It's hard to find fault. Yeah, this is great, man. Well, thank you. So if you can get a regular Costco brisket and do this with it, then anybody at home can do the same thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Gosh, this is good. All right, I'm gonna ask my wife who has like a nose and a set of taste buds that are unmatched. So what do you think? I've never had bark like that. That's crispy like that, yep. but it isn't dry and yep. tasteless. So it's crispy, but I've never had a brisket <clears throat> like it no, that I can remember. Yeah, so I've been thinking about it. I don't think you lost any smoke flavor with the crispiness here. This doesn't lack for smoke flavor. I don't know, if I'm grading this out of 100, I give it a 99.5. You know, I'm just very, very impressed. Okay. Legitimately, I knew it was gonna be good because I know you know your stuff, but it was even better than I thought. You know, in a world of paper wrapped briskets, this one will stand out. Whether it's better or worse is completely, you know, up to whoever's eating it, but mm -hmm. the fact that it's something different. Like when I did a direct heat brisket, it was still good, it was tender, it was rendered properly, yeah. but it had a completely different texture and flavor. There's more than one way to cook a brisket. Yeah. And look at how well you rendered that fat right there, man. That's great. Dude, this is beautiful. So we're gonna see a foil boat brisket on the mad scientist channel anytime i'll do soon. it yeah i'll do it man i mean uh, i may become a foil boat evangelist i think i prefer the texture of butcher paper as a matter of course but i 100 percent understand why you'd want this sometimes mm -hmm. maybe most of the time but why do you have to choose one if you can choose both exactly and if you're having trouble rendering fat this is the ticket all the way. Thanks for cooking this thing for me and let me try it. This is awesome. For sure, man. It's great to finally hang out together for uh, for a day or two. There are gonna be some videos on my channel and I'm really looking forward to it. Should we do the official taste test real quick? Of the doge. Mm-hmm. Is it good? Is it good? <laughs> it's good. This is what barbecue is about, man. This is, this is so good. I'm gonna have to try this. I think you do. Dude, I have to. All right, y'all, that is it. That is Jeremy Yoder's first impression of a foil boat brisket. I want to thank Jeremy Yoder and his wife for coming by and hanging out. We had a lot of fun, and they're some of the nicest people you can meet. And if you're not a subscriber to their channel, I highly recommend going over there and doing so. They're putting out a lot of great content. But that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by hitting that like button. Drop a comment down below if you want to see more collabs like this in the future. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making videos. Also, new merch just dropped on the website, so be sure to check that out. We got aprons, hats, shirts, hoodies, gloves, bandanas, all sorts of good stuff. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.